I think that uh, the previous video in this series, number five, has got not a few people questioning my sanity. Um, that's okay, I don't really mind, but uh, the original point that I was making in that video, in uh, number five, race and intelligence, was that it's impossible to gauge someone else's intelligence. I actually believe that. I would say that it's impossible to collect data systematically uh, to an accurate enough degree to actually tell whether or not someone is intelligent or stupid or whatever. Because human consciousness is not like that. You can't read someone else's mind. You certainly can't experience someone else's experiences, especially when every moment of every day, every decision that you ever make to do anything is based upon a series of cause and effect events that started when you were literally in the womb. Now I understand that, that a lot of people would say, well that's so out there in left field that uh, it doesn't really belong in this discussion. The whole point was IQ and that sort of thing um, between um, what are defined as races. Well, here's another crazy one I suppose, but it's another one that I actually believe. Um, I come from Canada and in the French province of Quebec, or at least in the entirety of French, Canadi uh, French Canada, uh, there were originally in the colonial period two types of people. There were the habitants, they were the peasants, the people who worked the land and lived a settled existence in farms. Um, and there were another group who were seen as subversive, the coureurs de bois. Um, they're the guys who lived out in the woods. They lived wild. They were usually men. I suppose there was a few women that went out there and lived like that, but they basically cut themselves off from white society. Um, and they lived extremely rough. If you've ever actually been in the wilds of Canada, you know that it's not the paradise that a lot of people outside of Canada believe it to be. In the summer, the woods are full of mosquitoes, there's mud everywhere, there's wild animals that are dangerous. There's all kinds of accidents you can get into. Um, there's all kinds of hazards out there. It's pitilessly cold in the winter. The cold can kill you easily. It's not a nice place to live. Now, can you imagine living two, three hundred years ago in those conditions, cut off from civilization? Well, there were so many French Canadians, or they, I guess they would just be called New French in France, uh, from France, New France, which was Canada at the time, who wanted to join these people, that the French authorities had to actually pass all kinds of laws threatening people with all kinds of dire penalties if they fled into the woods and became coureurs de bois. Now this is kind of interesting because the way that the, the French-speaking peasantry in Canada lived in Canada was much better than the way that they lived in France. Starvation was very rare. Um, they usually had plenty to eat. They lived a reasonably comfortable life. And yet, the forest was such a lure to these people that the authorities had to take measures to prevent young males from running off. It, was, it actually posed a serious threat, or it was believed to pose a serious threat to the French authorities. Why would someone want to go off and live, according to the people who lived at the time, as a savage and not as a reasonably prosperous human being? Well, this brings me to my view of civilization itself. I'm talking into a webcam here. I'm surrounded by technology. But I often ask myself, is technology really a step forward? Is it an advancement in our civilization? Is there something that we miss? Something that makes us want to be free, to be uh, at no one's beck and call, there's something inherent in our being that sees living a settled life as somehow suffocating. Now, if you look, if you've ever actually been to the third world and seen the way that um, a peasant in the developing world lives, say a peasant in Java or in India uh, or in uh, Peru or wherever, and you see the way that these people live, it's not the idealized vision uh, that we often have of the rural past. It was a life of endless drudgery, 
backbreaking work and um, hardship. And it was, I would assume, intellectually stifling. You're hemmed in by religion, you're hemmed in by the Lord, you're hemmed in by all kinds of people telling you what to do and how to think. Was that a matter of progress from what humanity had before, i.e. when we lived as hunter-gatherers? Is it logical to say that we have progressed? Um, I'm not saying that I want to go back to living like that. I can't. I'm a product of the modern world. But was this edifice of civilization that we've build up, built up just a detour, a bad idea? Um, the advantages of civilization are undeniable, but the pull of uncivilization is an enduring one. And it um, harkens back to my uh, statement that um, happiness is more important, if you ask me, than success, or happiness is more important than survival. Happiness is more important than anything. I am willing to say quite categorically that anyone who is not actively attempting to make themselves happy is insane. Um, so I wonder, is this idea that we have of progress, i.e. technical progress, material progress, progress at all. Are we any happier than we've ever been? And you even see this today in certain underclasses um, in our world. You see the way that, say, Af the African-American underclass lives in the U.S. inner city. He obviously or she doesn't want to live like that. Um, but there are certain things that even if they were to become prosperous like the larger society, they would not want to give up. And one of them is soul, their enjoyment of their life. Um, they, a lot of African Americans um, and a lot of people from my community, the Irish, tend to believe that they, they have some sort of inner enjoyment of life that other people don't have, especially, unfortunately, the Irish. We tend to see the English that way. I don't, but it's a common belief that the English, for all their efficiency, for all their smarts, for all their uh, intelligence, they don't really enjoy their lives, but the Irish do. Um, and a lot of the people in the underclass think that. Now, how much does that actually inform their thinking? When you believe that happiness is not worth sacrificing in order to get ahead. I'll even go so far as to say that how much, or ask how much is that going to uh, affect your answers on an IQ test when you're filling out an IQ test. The English or the modern sort of Western mindset says this is important. This is measuring my intelligence. Intelligence is my ability to solve puzzles, to think in a certain way. It has nothing whatsoever to do with how much I enjoy my few hours under the sun that I've got in this life. Whereas other people simply don't see it like that. They say enjoying yourself is far more important. How much is that going to affect every aspect of their lives uh, on both sides of the divide? Um, I've met people in my life who would say that anyone who thinks that enjoying their life is more important than succeeding is a loser. Yes, I have met people like that. But again, I believe, and I believe strongly, that anyone who is not actively attempting to become happy is insane. Thank you.